Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, 15 years ago when the Pentium 4 became available on the market, it never quite got to 4 gigahertz. Intel never released a 4 gigahertz Pentium 4. I think there was one in the works and then it apparently got cancelled and Last year, or a couple of years ago, we were supposed to see the first 4 gigahertz Pentium in the lineup. I think it was the G5620. Apparently it did become available, but I could never find one. And uh, yeah, I was left a little bit disappointed. I said that I would do a review when I could find it, but now, well, a 4 gigahertz Pentium has become widely available. And here in the UK, it cost 55 pounds. Now this is 10 pounds more than the Athlon 3000G from AMD, which retails for £45 currently. Um, but of course you do have to spend a little more at this point in time on a socket 1200 board for the Intel chip. Now to some, it may already seem like it's not worth it, but I thought we'd compare the G6400, as it's known, to the Athlon 3000G in a few gaming tests today to see which one comes out on top. Now I would have liked to see a four core Pentium uh, this generation, but unfortunately that is not the case. This still has two cores and four threads, which is why I think it's still comparable to the 3000G, which of course has two cores and four threads as well. Now we won't be comparing the integrated graphics because I think it's obvious which one will be the victor in that scenario, <coughs> 3000G, but yeah. Let's take a look at how these compare when they are both paired with 16 gigs of 2666 megahertz RAM and a GTX 1080 Ti. Now most of you, I would assume, probably won't pair either of these two chips with a 1080 Ti, but it will allow our CPUs to reach their maximum potential. So I've owned a couple of 3000G Athlons over the last year or so. This second one seems to be an absolute lemon, so I couldn't overclock it to see if it would beat the G6400. I am working on finding the right settings for it, but until then, this is a stock speed comparison. So it's ideal for anyone who just wants to slap either of these in their system and not worry too much about tweaking it further. I am working though, as I say, on finding better settings or a better board for the 3000G or just a new chip that won't limit me in this way. I don't know why it's uh, causing freezes and stuff, but I'll figure it out. When it came to the Cinebench R20 CPU test, well, the Pentium came out on top at stock speeds with 968 points scored in the multi-test and 370 in the single core performance test. This was compared to the 857 scored by the Athlon in the multi-core test and 337 scored by the Athlon in the single core test. So the results weren't too far off, but the Pentium does prove to be a little bit stronger. The Pentium for reference also sits between an old school first gen i7 and a more modern, slightly more modern i5-3550. For the first gaming test, I tried CSGO, a notoriously CPU intensive game, and with the G6400, the average frame rate came back at 287 with the Pentium and 215 with the Athlon. So again, it's over 200 frames per second with either of these CPUs and 16 gigs of 2666 megahertz RAM. Either one will provide a decent gaming experience, but it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to choose the AM4 platform or the LGA1200 platform, both of which do offer decent enough upgrade options, I think. With the LGA1200 socket, you can upgrade to an i5 or i7 later down the line. Even an i3 would offer better performance than this chip. And of course, with the AM4 socket, well, you have your choice of Ryzen's as well. So GTA 5, a fan favourite amongst the benchmarks here, the average frame rate with the G6400 was 110 FPS with a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 66. Now I should mention that uh, the previous CSGO test, I forgot to mention it just now, uh, we only got a average score recorded because I ran the in-game benchmark and I couldn't use an aftermarket piece of software like MSI Afterburner because it hasn't worked since the last CSGO update. In comparison, in GTA 5 though, the 3000G actually scored 85 frames per second, so quite a bit less than the Pentium, although the 1 and 0.1% lows were still quite respectable at 57 and 52 respectively. 
Of course, all of the footage you see today is from the G6400 gameplay because that is the chip we were primarily focusing on. So in PUBG, with the G6400, we saw 102 FPS on average with the high in-game settings. The 1.1% lows were a little low at 33 and 17. There was a little bit of lag and stutter to report. I'd imagine this is because we are working with a two-core, four-threaded chip, but the same can be said for the Athlon as well which scored an average of 71 and also saw pretty low 1.1% lows of 20 and 8. So yeah, PUBG doesn't really offer a fantastic experience at all with a two core four threaded chip and that's on both the Intel and AMD side of things. Now perhaps the closest result of the day was Red Dead Redemption 2 with the G6400. We averaged 55 with a 1% low of 42 and a 0.1% low of 37. With the Athlon for comparison, we saw 51 on average with 1.1% lows of 39 and 33. So there wasn't too much difference here. Red Dead Redemption 2 is of course more GPU intensive. As you can see, it's really putting our 1080 Ti to work here, but both CPU seem to handle the game fairly well with limited lag and stutter. Although as you approach busier town areas or city areas such as Valentine or Saint Denis, well, I could probably eat my words because you may see a few issues there. Now I wanted to test Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Warzone today, but I couldn't because I couldn't get into a game. It said something was wrong with the servers. The same thing happened with Fallout 76. Now I know it's not the most popular title, but it is a game that I've really been getting into again recently since the Wastelanders update. But that was giving me server problems as well, and I have moved so my internet is much better, so I can pretty much rule that out as a problem now. For our final game then, well, it's one I've been having fun with for ages, The Outer Worlds. On the Pentium, we saw 68 frames per second, with a 1% and 0.1% low of 13 and 7 respectively, so again, a few stutters here and there. This is, of course, due to the two physical cores of the chip, and the same can be said for the Athlon, which although performed relatively well, uh, on average with 54 frames per second, the 1 and 0.1% lows of 9 and 7 really didn't do this game or either of the chips justice, so there we go. If you are looking for a dual-core entry-level chip though because you want to build a cheap PC and perhaps want to upgrade your CPU a little later on, then I would personally go for the... I can't really say, you know, it's not my place to say, but I think both of these are good starting points, to say the least. I like what Intel have been doing at the lower end of things, especially with their i3 range, you know, with hyper-threading, but I do think it's time to upgrade the Pentiums to four core chips and there really is a nice place in the market if you get the price right. If they were at the same price, £55-60, and they had four cores, well, I think they'd be a no-brainer for a lot of people. But, you know, it's still better than the Celerons, which have also uh, seen another release this year. Um, those only have two cores and two threads, so if you want me to, I'll review one of those. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know which one you would buy and why in the comments and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.